this is another video of me making a virtual setup in Maestro 3D version 4 and here we have uh, crowding on the upper and lower arches and uh, the doctor asked us to maintain the relationships between the upper and lower posterior teeth so that uh, it's quite a simple case but uh, anyway two layers and um, some knowledge and skills so let's start and we'll start with uh, checking the virtual routes so my technicians when he prepares these models sometimes leave some imperfections Some small adjustments. Well, position more straightforward, so that uh, we'll keep the uh, those rotations uh, of the revolvers and motors, and just expand uh, the teeth as they are. And uh, now let's check the axis from another point of view. The angulation of the insiders, as you can see, the rotation is placed in the middle of the because liners they tilt the tip, they uh, don't produce the pure body. Place this axis more uh, 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 parallel to the occlusion plane, so that they will move more straightforward. And on the right side, I do the same. In case when I need just an expansion, without any additional rotations, tipping, etc., I place axis this way. Well done. Let's go to the lower arch and we start with occlusion view. Well, most important teeth are risers, so we can check And uh, for the posterior teeth, the same will be expanding without any other types of movements, so that I place those axes more straight to the buckle direction. Same for the relation of the. We're ignoring the anatomy of the remolders, but for frontal teeth, we do not ignore the anatomy. We place the virtual axis right in the middle of the root, so that we are simulating they are more realistic. work on the roots. I think it's fine. Yep, I will spend 5-10 minutes uh, to check the axis of the teeth after my technician because it's a very crucial step. Well, let's start uh, finding the upper and lower incisors and uh, 
posterior teeth. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, the rotations and the uh, expansion of the frontal teeth works better if we expand the teeth as well. in the previous were uh, really limited in the movement of the second uh, molars so uh, we can efficiently distalize it but the other movements like expansion like rotations uh, as well as the vertical movements uh, they are almost impossible for the liners so that uh, we cannot expand uh, the second molars with just uh, aligners without any additional things so that we keep them at the same position or even move them a little bit uh, lingually to create more tension in the rest of the al aligner um, so let's check this out uh -huh. We have already expanded the posterior teeth and now we are starting to expand to procline the uh, incisors. I always prefer to uh, leave some small gaps at the first layer in, uh, cases, in the cases like this to make sure that uh, our IPR is evenly and here I see that rotation exceeds the torque movement um, and a few times so that I need to maintain the ratio one to one between rotation and torque to um, have the rotation to actually um, happen so that I add some torque and I reduce the rotation but let's see the length of the root if it's short enough yes it, it is short enough so that we can go a little bit uh, farther and um, a little bit break our rules about one to one but I think here it's possible not to keep the this ratio but in the most cases um, I keep the I maintain the ratio one degree of rotation one degree of torque so that rotation should not uh, exceed the torque the torque can exceed the rotation of course it's not necessary to add the rotation if it's not needed but uh, yeah we, we must combine the rotation with the proclining to both directions because the liners are limited in uh, bodily translational movements so we're expanding upper teeth as well you can even choose a few teeth at the same time and add some torque um, Since liners are limited in translational movements, I prefer to use the tipping. Uh -huh, let's move the second molars a little bit uh, And now let's check the occlusal contacts. Mm -hmm, I think it's... Uh, not much changes. I think they're quite good. Uh, we didn't change it much. So let's let's start. Uh, let's create the layer two. 
but uh, before we do that we should align the insiders on the upper jaw more evenly uh, more uh, create uh, Good, uh, to, to create some space uh, to, to, to make some gaps between the teeth uh, so that we reduce the IPR in the future and let's see how it looks in the, well, with the roots yes, the roots are inside the bone so we're safe here uh, well what about the ratio between rotation and torque yes the rotation exceeds the torque uh, for four degrees so that let's reduce the rotation let's add some more torque so that uh, we get more chances for this rotation to actually um, happen well let's check the relationships between the canines insiders okay we, we get some sagittal gap we get some uh, gaps between the teeth, but <coughs> have a zero chance of pushing the teeth with IPR at the first uh, stages, and uh, we also have a very high percentage of success of the rotations uh, because we do this wrong. And now we create the layer two uh, for. Uh, Finalize the position of the insiders and clients. Here we can use both uh, torque movements and uh, translational. But I think uh, uh, torque movements, which are much more simple, they are enough here. It's a simple compromise case, so we don't need to try to do everything ideally if we want something ideal it's not about aligners usually it's more about brackets and orthognatic surgery and aligners are more they're designed for more for compromise cases in my opinion of course we don't buttons, elastic materials, chains, some special appliances. I uh, see that the uh, left insider is uh, just its crown is just bigger than uh, the same crown on the opposite side. So I think we should align them this way and the doctor will decide if he wants to put some veneers or maybe just cut the enamel uh, just cut the anatomy of the teeth uh, I think it uh, will show uh, this virtual setup to the doctor and see what he wants um, here I see some sagittal gap and of course we can leave it this way because we had some uh, sagittal gap at the beginning as well so we didn't do we didn't worse it we didn't worsen it uh, but uh, what can we do we can uh, make some distalization to reduce this sagittal gap and let's try to do that well, I delete the uh, layer one, I delete the layer two, I delete the layer one, and I start with a uh, distillation. And uh, I think I'll need about 
step by step continuation starting with the second molars third molars which is good for us well zero point five zero point five Layer two, moving the inside uh, the um, second molar to the desired position. Well done, and starting to move the first molars. Uh, this stage we're moving them for uh, zero point five. And we also we can also start moving the insiders, and I would have started to move them from the very first layer. Let's go back to it and add some reclining. We'll ask the patient to wear to wear uh, some uh, class two elastics to get some additional anchorage. Layer to representative position, so that they go to the position we created at the layer one, and we go on. Small proclining, small rotations. Well, let's see the changes mm -hmm. now layer 3 placing the molars to the desired uh, uh, final position starting to move the second premolars Since the numbers are quite minor, uh, quite small, we uh, can combine the bodily movements and tipping movements. It doesn't make uh, much sense. It doesn't affect the setup much. Aha, uh -huh, and I forgot to add some tipping to the frontal teeth. Uh -huh, checking the ratio between torque and rotation good layer 3 the second premolars they go to the uh, final position and we also every time we uh, distalize uh, the posterior teeth we add some expansion to maintain the width of the arch mm -hmm. so we see some expansion going on and uh, we're starting to move the first premolars for 0 0.5 approximately here and there well Line and the incisors more and more, keeping the ratio between rotation and torque. Good. And now we are starting to. Uh, first of all, we are moving the premolars to the desired position. To their final. 
place and now we're starting to move the canines here we can make a decision do we need uh, uh, a tipping movement or a translational movement if we do the translational we'll need to uh, wear class 2 elastics um, between upper and lower teeth but here I think we can do it without the without the uh, translational movement just with the tipping I think it will be good here so let's move the canines for two thirds and at the next layer uh, which one which uh, layer six will put the canines to the final position and let's check the contacts between upper and lower uh -huh, I see some sagittal gaps so we can uh, tip the canines more palatally more inwards uh, that part. Uh -huh. and now we can start moving the, moving the insiders we'll combine the tipping and the torque movements I think the sagittal gap now is not uh, present anymore so we make half uh, tipping, half translational movements for the insiders so since we make a bodily retraction we will need to put the uh, negative attachments as we did at the previous case well we are very limited in uh, improving the excess of uh, the teeth with the liners and I think it's just not possible here to improve the torque of the crown, the root. We just cannot uh, get enough uh, force to uh, improve this angulation. Um, of course, if we don't use the, some additional like buttons, elastics, and uh, hooks. So. the insiders with these imperfections but if the doctor wants he can put some hooks some buttons and chains and uh, can improve this situation quite easily but not with the uh, just the liners but working uh, by themselves with just attachments If you would have uh, short roots and big crowns and blah blah blah, so it might be possible, but not now, not in this case. So let's turn on the gum and see the final position of the teeth. And so here we expect that the doctor will put the veneers or some prosthetic stuff. Uh -huh, I don't like this. Uh, position of the, the first premolar so let's go back to the layer number four when we move it this way uh -huh, and, and fix this well ah. So this is a desired position and now we just reset it to the position. So and add the further layers and it goes. There. Mm -hmm. Reducing the gaps. Mm 
Okay, can add some drawing here. Well, of course, it's a compromise case. We made some improvements, but now uh, after our uh, teeth movements, we also see some imperfections between the, the central incisors because at the uh, first stage it was not uh, really noticeable because of these rotations and uh, uh, difference in the teeth position so this height of the tooth it was like uh, hidden and now it's more visible this difference in the anatomy so let's show this to the doctor and uh, see if he is okay with this or he wants to add uh, to put some auxiliaries to improve the uh, angulation of the frontal teeth now let's put some attachments here um, we did some distalization so that we need to uh, create special buttons on the upper first premolars and lower first molars. This way we mark the places, uh, the spots for the technician uh, for cutting the uh, holes in the aligners. So this kind of attachments we use for retention. They also help to digitalization. And let's put some attachments which help the distillation, which are designed for distillation. I prefer to use this shape and this size, like 110 degrees, spherical shape. And we can copy and paste it to the rest of the posterior teeth. Placing them in the same line. And the same at the other side. Not forgetting to put the numbers on. And uh, also use some retentive attachments on the lower first numbers. Let's place them this way. And down the opposite side is the same. Uh, I think this one is not necessary. Because we don't do much of intrusion, so we don't need that much uh, tension. Uh -huh. And uh, let's add some negative attachments uh, to the insiders. 
don't forget to put this to mark them as uh, negative as the negative ones because otherwise they will be uh, orange so we create some additional um, like power ridges like the places of the force application to push more close to the apex to the to the root and now let's set uh, those attachments for all the layers but uh, we don't need these negative attachments on the, at the uh, first five layers so I'm just removing all these attachments keeping them only at the very final layer at the layer number six mm -hmm. So they help us to achieve some uh, retraction, not just the tipping. Well, let's uh, check the final, the, 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 the check, uh, let's check the uh, position of the uh, insiders, if we are satisfied or not. But here I think we should add some overcorrection. Uh -huh, I'm done with the lower arch uh, and let's check the upper teeth. So, um, central insider, the left the central insider was more towards more more forward uh, at the beginning so we should put it more uh, of course more palatally at the final step Let's to overcorrect a little bit and distributing the space close all the gaps and we can choose all the teeth at the same time and do it like this to make sure that we closed all the gaps between the teeth okay Do we need some other uh, attachments? I think yes. We need one more attachment at the lower left canine. No, the right one. Because here we have a uh, 9 degrees of rotation and it won't work if we don't put the attachment here. It's very uh, difficult for liners to rotate the rounded teeth like canines and premolars so that we always have to put the attachments on such teeth so we can use this shape or uh, I also uh, like this uh, triangular shaped uh, attachments for me they work very well okay we put the numbers, we put all the attachments, uh, we're satisfied with the position of the teeth and let's count how many liners should we produce to achieve this result. I 
here we go. Mm -hmm. uh, we're moving the we're moving the canine for such a big uh, distance at the layer one. So I would reduce the uh, speed of movements uh, to 0 0.2 millimeters or 200 microns. And at the layer two, uh, the rotation is 1.5. Distance is less than 0 0.25. So we are okay with these numbers. So 12 liners in total. And let's see how many liners should we make for the upper arch. I tried to uh, make uh, three aligners for every stage, but in the reality, numbers are a bit different. Okay. For the distal movements, I try not to exceed the 0 0.25. Uh, for vestibular tipping, uh, not to exceed uh, 0 0.25 as well. And for canines, it's uh, 0 0.2. So for the last layer, uh, where we make this retraction, we should be uh, beyond uh, 0 0.3, so it's 0 0.29. It should be fine, but let's be even slower and add one more here. Ah, I forgot something. I forgot to remove the negative attachments because we don't need the uh, additional anchorage. Uh, once we've done with the premolars, so we can remove those uh, red buttons from the upper jaw at the final layer. So 26 aligners for the upper and 12 for the lower. Okay, let's do some adjustments, trying to reduce the quantity of aligners. Let's slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find uh, where I was too fast. And I reduce those numbers. So once we reduce the torque, we also reduce the rotation. Mm -hmm. Now, one, two, three. the mistake mm -hmm. now it's fixed
of uh, for the in yes I should the first layer is fine 0 0.4 uh, 0 0.55 time I think it's Checking the quantity of miners. Two. Two. Okay, let it be zero point three. Was 26, now it's 24. Not distalizing more than two teeth at the same time. And since we have uh, pretty short roots on the premolars, we used some. Uh, bigger numbers, bigger than usual, up uh, to 0 0.3 per step. Despite we use uh, 0 0.25 per step um, f 
for the major of uh, cases, the uh, vast majority of cases. Okay, let's uh, save this and show to the customer.